Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another Wednesday webinar. This has been the highly anticipated chat GPT and Lumio. Um, I know we've had a lot of hype around this. It's finally arrived. I, you're probably wondering where's Beck Wulno? Um, she's actually traveling in New Zealand at the moment. And so we thought it best for her to record this session um, just in case she had any technical difficulties over the ocean. Um, and so we will hit play in just a second. Um, so first of all, I did just want to uh, welcome everybody and also just acknowledgement to country. Um, this webinar is being hosted on the traditional lands of the Gadawal people of the Darung Nation. And I pay my respects to both um, to elders, I beg your pardon, both past, present and future. And I respect and acknowledge Aboriginal people as the traditional custodians of the land and the waterways on which I work and live and visit. So look, an awesome session today. I'll also just mention that um, we will do some, we can do some follow up. Um, if you're new to Lumio, Beck does do a bit of an introductory to Lumio, but then she goes quite quickly sort of through some of our tools and features. So don't, don't worry about that. We'll send through some videos. Um, so if you wanted to learn how to create some of the resources from sort of um, a foundation knowledge base up, um, well, you can get those videos um, uh, that we'll send to you and you can watch them and then be able to sort of apply it. For those of you that are a bit of our super users, I think you're going to be incredibly impressed in what Beck has done today. I was um, inspired, that's for sure. Um, and ChatGPT is now my new best friend. So look, enjoy the session um, and yeah, get inspired and we'll be here for any questions. Obviously you can't, um, there'll be no live Lumio sessions, but please uh, send through any questions through the chat and we'll be here to answer them. Enjoy the webinar, everyone. And welcome to our Wednesday webinar. My name is Beck Walno. I am one of the educational solutions specialists here in Australia and New Zealand. I'm based in Melbourne, but currently coming from uh, from uh, coming to you live from New Zealand. Not live, actually. We're pre-recording, so by the time you watch this recording, I will actually be working with our New Zealand educators. Uh, we do have my Sydney counterpart, the beautiful Molly Turner. She is working with our teachers in New South Wales as we speak also. I have 16 years in education. I was the digital pedagogical coach, which is just a fancy way of saying I taught on class. And then for two days a week, I worked with our prep to year two teachers on how we were using the right technology in the right way to enhance and augment the teaching and learning in our classrooms to impact the outcomes for both our students and our teachers, which is really important. Um, I was a leading teacher too in digital leadership and now I am an adoption specialist. So I work with our jurisdictions, our educational leaders, our schools on how we're impacting our outcomes with the right technology, which is really important. Those of you who do know me over on the on the pin board, you can see my favourite word is yet. Uh, we celebrate failures. Uh, they're very big in our classroom. I do love failures. Um, and but one thing that you might not know about me is that I'm actually halfway through a master's degree in cybersecurity, loving that at UNSW, uh, which is why ChatGPT and things like data privacy and security are right down my alley of passions. All right, so let's have a look at our learning objectives. And we're going to blitz through this quite quickly because I do want to get into the thick and the thick of um, lesson planning. So we're going to, at the end of this session, you're going to understand what Lumio is what JetGPT is, how JetGPT can be used in conjunction with Lumio to enhance lesson planning and instruction. Uh, and then we might at the end share some hacks if we have time for how to use JetGPT outside of Lumio. And if we don't have time, I will show you where you can find them. Uh, and then we can engage in a short question and answer. Now, one thing to remember is that I've actually built this lesson for you to take back to your staff to do with your staff. So I've actually built in uh, interactive and collaborative activities for your staff to do. So you can do this over one to three three sessions um, and have your, your teachers do this. One thing I will note is that this webinar was originally presented on March 8, 2023 and is based on the most up-to-date information available at the time. Uh, we all know technology moves super quickly and so by you know the end of next week, it might have all changed. Um, you can see I've actually been playing with this webinar already and I've used it a few times uh, with a couple of teachers. I like to build in choice and voice into my lessons, and you would have seen that in most of my webinars. 
So what I like to do and what you can do with your teachers is, okay, well, we, why, where do we want to start? Do we want to start with Lumio or do we want to start with ChatGPT? And all I did was popped an image in of a car and infinitely cloned it for my teachers. So what you can see is there's the original and there's the little infinitely cloned icon. So as many teachers as you want, I would actually turn this into a handout using the little magic wand up here and turn it into a whole class whiteboard so that everybody's in there and everybody can have a vote. And we're going to start with Lumio today. So what is Lumio? Well, we're in Lumio and some of you might be asking, well, Beck, yes, you're in Lumio, but you're in the edit mode of Lumio. And that's for a reason. It's because we're doing lesson planning, not delivery. So I want to show you how we use ChatGPT with lesson planning. So we have to be in the edit mode. So I'm in the edit mode currently. Um, and what you can see is you can see the pages on the side, the content pages, and all of the little icons up the top where we can add content. Now, I started with a poll, as I always do when I'm introducing a new topic. So you can see a response here. Now, remember our responses are assessments. They can give you, well, they do give you live updates of the responses of your participants. And then you can export those responses out into an Excel spreadsheet. Now, the one that I've used is um, on Lumio. Basically, I have asked them, I use Lumio and given them options to choose from. I love it. No, I haven't tried it yet. A little, I'd like some training. I use Notebook, but I would but would like to use Lumio or I need to set up an account. That's just the temperature gauge, gauge for you to differentiate where your instruction needs to be. If they're all over it and they love Lumio, then you don't need to spend any time on it. Just jump straight to ChatGPT. But if they haven't set up an account, I've given you a cheat sheet. So down here on page 10, you can see here's your instructions, three simple instructions to set up an account. Now, whether they're setting up a free account or they're setting up an account that's linked to a purchase license, the activity is, th is the same. So it's the three same steps. So you go to lumio or lum.io.com or you go to um, the link that I provided in this page. You click get it for free and then you sign in or sing in, sing in with your school account. Uh, so you can sign in with your school account, uh, whether you've purchased a license or it's free, and it will do the same thing. The only difference is that if you purchase a license, not only will you get the full functionality of Lumio, you'll actually get unlimited space. If you sign up for a free account, you'll actually get the full functionality of Lumio with limited space. So you won't get a whole bunch of space, just enough to do a few lessons. Um, and again, if you're um, a support or your uh, IT admin, or you are the teacher that is blessed with the responsibility of managing all of this for your staff, this link is for you. It's the admin support page. So it'll teach you everything you need to know about provisioning licenses. Now I've popped in these pages for you. We won't go through them too much, but I've done a screenshot of this editing page. Now the reason I've done that is because you're gonna deliver this lesson as teacher to student, so your participants or your staff will actually be connected to you as a student. They won't see this editing page, but you can now walk them through the fact that this is, here's your pages, here's your blue content page, this is the dialogue box it brings up. Look at all of these amazing things that you can pull into your lesson. You can start from scratch, you can pull in a PDF, a PowerPoint, a notebook or a Google slide, or you can have all four and amalgamate them into the one lesson. How amazing is that? Um, and you can get your teachers excited about Lumio. I've also added the little screenshot of the magic wand and you can go through all of those explanations. Now, don't forget that the little magic hat or the little hat that you see on the side of every single activity functionality inside Lumio has a little YouTube attached to it. So it has inbuilt tutorials, which is fantastic. So that will, that's a two minute tutorial, that YouTube tutorial, sorry, that will teach them what the activity is how to build it and why to use it. Now, what is Lumio? Well, Lumio is Australia's leading learning platform or what we like to call the leading lesson delivery software. It's designed by teachers for teachers to help create deliver, uh, create and deliver engaging and interactive lessons. Now, what I do wanna do is draw your attention to a really important badge called Safer Technologies for Schools. Now, we were assessed in 2021 and are committed to doing this every year from now on, now that they're doing it yearly. So what is it about? It's about privacy and data security, something that I'm um, passionate about and that we um, uh, are ha hold in the utmost importance here at SMART. So Lumio has been assessed by Safer Technologies for School, which is the SDF ST for S assessment tool uh, run by NSIP um, in 2021. So the ST for S service is a nationally standard approach to evaluating digital products and services used by schools across Australia. It is supported by the state and territory governments 
and the Catholic and independent school sectors, which means it doesn't matter what type of school you're in, whether you're in the department, whether you're a Catholic school or whether you're in the independent sector, you can access the report. st for s has made this available for all schools. So all you do need to do is contact your head office to gain the assessment report for Lumio or for any software platform that you're using. Teachers are incredible people. They are gifted and talented. They are also bowerbirds that collect on all of these amazing platforms that they want to use with their students. Um, but the, the issue with that is that the data that goes into them, regardless of whether we intend it to go into or not, is actually being collected on our students and our staff. Now that's really dangerous in a few ways because we don't know where the data is stored or what's being done with that data. So this is an assessment that is fantastic and much, uh, very much needed here in Australia to ensure that any software or educational software that's purchased in schools, used in schools, has actually been assessed against a criteria or a framework that is assessing their data privacy and security. So definitely, definitely check that out. Okay. And now I'm jumping, I've done a little summary page for you of all the key features. You can see I'm quite a visual creature, so I do like images. Um, so when we talk about integration, you can see I've done image there for you. So we integrate with Google, PowerPoint, PDF, Google Slides, all of those wonderful things, YouTube. And this little image up here, I quite love this one because it speaks to the teacher and the students. So a teacher can run the lesson from a phone, from a laptop, from a handheld device, or directly from the smart board. And equally, your students can access that content from a laptop, from an iPad, from an iPhone, or directly on the board together. And I love that. Um, okay, I popped in a YouTube just for my teachers to explore that. So if I was running this lesson with my staff, which I have, I would do, you know, a couple minutes, probably 10 minutes on Lumio. So I would run through a few things. I would then turn it to student case so they can interact and work through those lessons by what those pages by themselves, watch the YouTube, which is fantastic. And don't forget to point out that when they add a YouTube, they can search for it. It's a white hat search. And any YouTube that they add will actually play without ads at the front. The ticker tape adds over the top and won't play the YouTube underneath, which is fantastic. And will lock my students into the lesson, won't send them off down the vortex of YouTube and end up on the other side um, dazed and amazed after watching uh, how-to videos on Minecraft or Roblox or whatever they're playing at the moment. So I would give them a few minutes to explore. And then what I would do is I would bring them in and I would grab a template. So you go to your contents page, you grab a graphic organizer and you grab a brainstorming web template, just like this one. And then I'll add it straight into your lesson. I would use the text tool, I would add my question to the middle circle right here. And then what I would do is I would use my magic pen or my magic wand and make it a whole class whiteboard. Now, why would I do that? I'm going to delete that because I am going to give you this lesson and you don't want random pages in there. But basically, my favourite feature in Lumio is. <coughs> so I've then got my teachers to go out and research Lumio and play with Lumio and experiment with Lumio and come up with their own ideas. And now what I'm doing is I'm generating a whole staff resource of ideas and features that they can use in the classroom awesome so fantastic 10 minutes little introduction to lumio um, i'm not going to spend too much time on what chat gpt is but i would do a poll again and this poll then ask them have they signed up for an account or not and if they have not i would jump to set up a chat gpt account whether before or after you teach them what chat gpt is and you can see there's the instructions there it is two-factor authentication so it does have those security features and as an introduction to using ChatGPT, I would actually give them a task, to give your staff a task. So I would ask them to, you know, ask ChatGPT the benefits and the limitations of using ChatGPT as a teacher, or what are the benefits and limitations of using it as a student, or what are the things I need to be aware or teach my students about using ChatGPT? That would be a really cool question to ask it. So once I've got them signed up, I would then teach them what it is. Basically, it's an, an artificial intelligence. And we're not going to go into it. There are varying different forms of artificial intelligence. Basically, ChatGPT is a chatbot that gets its resource or its information to formulate its answer for your questions from open source information. Open source information is freely available in, uh, information that's available on the internet. Um, it was created by OpenAI and released in September. It has had iterations and developments and evolved. Um, it is fantastic. 
um, to you, but there are limitations in that there are some bias because it is pulling from information that is freely available on the internet, which is not all correct and often bias. So don't forget that when I teach it with ChatGPT and when you teach it with teach with ChatGPT or use ChatGPT, the rule of thumb is check, fact check always, always, always fact check. So anything it gives you, take it on, you can't, cannot take it on face value, you do need to go in and research and make sure it is correct or that it's what you're after. So um, it is a chat bot, it uses, um, it tries to have conversations with you in natural language essentially. So you ask it a question, it gives you an output. Uh, how much do you use AI? So I love to do this poll. This is one of my favorites because they realize it's a nice realization of how much AI is actually in everyday life. And I don't talk about that before I do this poll. I just go, how much AI do you think you use every day? Um, we've got things like zero to two, three to five and 10 plus. And then we look at the top 11 AI in everyday life. As you can see here, I actually just asked ChatGPT to give me a list and then I chose the top 11. Um, 10 probably would have been better, but I chose 11. Um, and you can see, you know, personal assistants like Siri and Alexa, uh, search engines, social media, banking, navigation, like Google Maps, uh, Spotify is a huge one, gaming, which we all sort of figured anyway. So what I wanted to do is I would give them three minutes to go and research AI in everyday life. I've popped a link in there that they can use. And then on the next page in a shout it out, throw out some ideas on how you use AI in everyday life that we haven't already looked at. So again, they're getting their eye understanding of what AI is and we're crowdsourcing that information. They're developing the information for you, not you giving it to them, which I think is fantastic. And then redo the poll. Now, how much AI do you think you do? I guarantee you, it will increase. So yes, we do look at how teachers use ChatGPT um, today. That's what our purpose of our webinar is. We There is discussion around students and the use of students and as a student who uses ChatGPT, as a tutor, I can advocate that it is fantastic as long as we teach our students how to use ChatGPT effectively um, and um, with the right guidance, they can use it in ways that support their learning and scaffold their learning in effective ways as long as they're being responsible with it. And so today is not about that, today is about teacher use. So let's jump into it. The biggest hint I will give you is that it's all about the prompts. Make sure that you are specific in what you want. Give it instructions on how you want it to lay it out. Uh, then if you need to, give it some examples or information that it might need to draw on to formulate its answer. And the more, the better. And then build on your instructions. So if you put in a question and it's given you an output that's not quite right, build on that. Don't go to a new chat stay in the thread and continue asking it and prompting it to give you a better answer. Um, so let's jump in, let's do an example lesson. Now I have created an example lesson already. I'm a year two teacher. We stuck with the water cycle because we were doing um, science and I thought, well, why not? Let's do water cycle. So I've actually built it already, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the conversation I have with ChatGPT and how I develop this. So I'm gonna just pop it to the side and then pop chat GPT this side. So you can see the full lesson here, you can see the water cycle. Now my teacher page, if you have a look at this, is a complete copy of this. So my, my prompt to chat GPT was create an Australian curriculum aligned lesson plan for a year two class on the water cycle in Lumio. So I tell it what platform I'm using and then I specify or give it context. Lumio is Smart Learning Suite or formerly known as Smart Learning Suite. Why do I do that? Well. The information that it draws on is limited to, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, 2021. Now, at that point, Lumio was known as Smart Learning Suite. So to give it context, that's what I use. Um, so you can see, here we go. We've got our learning outcomes, which you can see here, or learning objectives, which is underneath. I've got my curriculum links, which this one didn't actually give me. Um, the previous one did. So I went and copied that from the previous one because I did do it twice just to practice and see if it came up with the same, same output. It didn't. It came up with different ideas, which was pretty cool. Um, and you can see the assessment, which it decided to pop down the bottom. There you go, the assessment, and I've just copied it there. All I did was copy and paste that entire information. Now, that I'm prefacing that with the fact that I went in and double-checked my curriculum links and I double-checked what my learning objectives should be. So copy and page and there, copy and paste. And then all I did was duplicate that page. So I press those three little buttons 
and I duplicated that page. Now already I am improving uh, my, my time expenditure on this lesson already. So I've made my student outcomes. So if I've, the reason I've got the teacher page is if I want to share that with any other teachers that are in my year two cohort and they want to use the lesson as well, um, they can have a look at it. Uh, and then I leave my learning outcomes for my students because we like that visual learning. They like to know what they're actually doing. So here you go, here's the lesson. And so if I go back to the top, you can see teachers will begin the lesson by asking the students if they have ever seen rain, snow or hail. Now I could do that as a poll if I wanted to. So all I would do is add a new activity, come down to response, add a poll. Um, and my internet is being a little bit fickle at the moment. So super, super slow. So this will be the only one that I'll do on the fly. So have you ever seen, and now if I really want to, rain, snow, or hail. Now, rather than type it, I can copy and paste it. Now, that comes into play when you're typing in lots of information. I mean, one word, is, one word isn't too much. But quickly, I have copied and pasted my response. So I'm going to pop that there. And then I'm going to drive it up there because this activity now aligns to question two, which is the teacher can then show the students a diagram of the water cycle and ask them if they know what it is. So what I've done is I've created a shout it out. I thought, oh, that's awesome if I ask, what is this? And what do you know about this already? Now, I've made them text, I've made show their names, and I've given them seven um, options. I went custom, and the reason I went custom is because the background that I want to do is this image here. Now, I'm not going to go re-search it, but essentially all I did was click that picture and then do a Bing safe search, typed in the water cycle and found one that I wanted to use. So I found this lovely one on the water cycle. So they're going to get the question at the top, the picture of the water cycle, and then their responses are going to come up over the top of the water cycle. So what is this? They'll have the water cycle. What facts do you know? And they might give me facts. Some of them might even use technical terminology. So it really gives me an insight into their prior knowledge. Love that idea. Okay, now I'm going to jump to the body. So the teacher will use Lumio to play a short video on the water cycle. So all I did was come in and press plus and then YouTube, just like you saw me do earlier. And then I typed in the water cycle and I picked a peekaboo active peekaboo YouTube because I love it. Um, and so there we go. I've popped that in. The next activity says do a label. Now I want to do a digital label because I want them to explore it together. So all I did was press plus, go into game based activities, found label reveal, and then I added the label. Um, so you can see here, sorry, I can't get to that little X without moving that page. So you can see there's my label. I'm going to preview it really quickly. I use the same image because I really love consistency. This is obviously going to be bigger on their little iPads. And when they're not sure what something is, so let's go with this one. That one must be evaporation because it's going up into the clouds. But what does evaporation mean? Well, it means this. So now my students can explore that. But where did I get that information from? So if you come down here, I did ask it one question before I got there, but I asked it to create a list of terminology and meaning for the water cycle and place it in a table. So I was specific about what I wanted and then I outlined or gave it instructions on how I wanted it to, to present it. And so here you go. In a table, you've got evaporation right through to surface water and it's got all of the meanings and descriptions in there. So I just chose the, the, the main terminologies and copied and pasted directly into my label reveal. So you can see condensation right there as well. Easy, easy, easy. Okay, now I knew before I jumped into the gamifications, I actually wanted to do an experiment. Now the experiment I had in mind uh, was something different, um, but it did suggest a Ziploc bag um, experiment. Now this is a little bit further down because it got to the point where I built all of these activities and I thought, well, I actually, I want to do a science experiment on it. So if we come down here, and I do apologise if this is making you a little bit sick, um, here we go. I said, is there a water cycle experiment in a Ziploc bag? Because I remember seeing them. Um, can you send me a link as well? So yeah, it did. Yeah, there is a popular water cycle experiment that can be done. Um, here's the link. And all I did was build this page. 
So now I've got the instructions. I've got the link to the, the experiment instructions. And all I'm going to give my students is um, a Ziploc bag, a marker, and some food dye. So they can make um, the water look blue and they can do the rest. I'm going to let them lead this experiment. And then what I did, all I did to make it nice and easy is I grabbed a template from the contents bar. So if I make this big again, press contents bar, go straight to graphic organizers and all I picked, I think it was a calendar one. Yeah, this one, the definition table. So I picked that table and then all I did was insert it in there and I popped day one to day five and I turned it into a handout. So every day my students are going to come in, they're going to look at their water cycle and write their observations, which I think is pretty cute. Now, what I did when I started building these activities was I thought, this is awesome. I've got so many activities. So it did say up the top, and I do apologize for jumping back and forth in my thread and my conversation with ChatGPT, um, because I do have lots of lots of long chats with it, um, is I did go, okay, well, I'm gonna use Lumio. I want some ideas on how to use sorting, matching, and quiz games inside Lumio based on the water cycle. So what it did was it came up with these five games, five or four, five, yeah. So it came up with a couple of sorting games. One was sorting the stages of the water cycle, which was cool. One matching games and so matching the, the water vocab with the definition, matching the quiz, like doing quizzes, um, which I thought was awesome. And then another sorting game, which I didn't think of, which is identifying sources of water. Love that. Uh, and then another matching game, so pictures to stages, which I thought was cool. So all I did was like, okay, great, I'm going to make them. So I want to do a match them up. And so here we go, a matching game. Match the water cycle vocabulary words with their definitions. Okay, great. I want to do that, but I don't want to make the list and I don't want to make the definitions. So I just went to my trusty little list here where I said create a list of terminology and meaning for the water cycle and place it in a table. So if you go into my game and preview it, you will notice the terminology and the meanings. All I did was copy and paste each into it. Now my students will grab that and then they get to play a game. Quick and easy for me, engaging and fun and rich learning for them. Um, I will get to the instruction pages. I will come back to that because they are pretty special. So um, let's just have a look at a few more games before we jump into that. Okay, so sorting game. Let me do that one. And so what was the next one I did? What are the main stages? Yeah, so I did the main stages. So let's do the sorting activity. So all I would do plus go find the games. I would go to rank all. Uh, and then all I would do is add the content. So I think I'm going to go from eva evaporation, copy and paste. And then all I would do is add the stages. So we go evaporation condensation, precipitation, and let's put one more in, collection, because essentially if we boil down to it, it's those four, right? So I can choose when they get feedback. Instantly means they'll pop out if it's wrong. Uh, when prompted means they have to go through the entire cycle and then check it or don't check it all. And sometimes I do that if I'm going to use it as an assessment. But for now, I'm going to leave it as instantly. I'm going to choose next. I'm going to choose a template, which let's go with pirates because that's our theme this term, and finish. And voila, I have used ChatGPT data into my lesson to create a fun game where they have to figure out does uh, precipitation come after condensation or does it come after evaporation? So there we go, we've used another activity there. Now, the next point was do a quiz. All right, I love quizzes. I have three different types of quizzes I have a speed up. I have, uh, uh, oh, I call it the hot seat, but it's like who wants to be a millionaire? Um, and then you also have team quiz. You also have monster quiz, which is like team quiz as well, but I like to use monster quiz because it's more primary geared. Um, so I wanted to get 10 questions. Now, all of those quizzes, they only use multiple choice or true or false. So that I put that in my question. So create a quiz of 10 questions on the water cycle for a year two students have been very specific the questions need to be true or false and multiple choice. Do five each in dot point. Now, when I was doing this, when I originally did this, I didn't put in, make sure you give me the incorrect answers and the correct answers. And then I had to redo it all. 
Um, but for some reason, it has learnt that that's what I want. So I didn't have to ask it for this one. So here you go. Here are 10 questions on the water cycle for a year two student. Five questions are true or false and five are multiple choice. So you can see it's given me the question. It's given me the answer. In my multiple choice, it's given me the question. It's given me all possible answers. And then it's given me the actual answer, which is amazing because now all I have to do is read through them, make sure that they're at the level that I want and, and questioning around the things that I want. And then all I need to do is copy and paste them in there into the activity. So choose my template and then copy and paste. Now, if I'm doing multiple, all I do is say, okay, great, create me another 10 different questions. And so that's exactly what it did. So copy and paste. And now I have my speed up. So I have my speed up with 10 questions. Amazing. Um, and then what I did was I went, oh, the sources of water. That was one I didn't actually think of, which I really, really liked. So all I did was I came in, I chose my game, and then I chose Super Sort. Brilliant. And then all I said was, give me a list of sources of water in the water cycle that I could use in a sorting game, i.e. natural or memo. Basically, I just reframed its suggestion in the lesson plan. So there you go, natural sources and man-made sources. So all I do, again, is I copy and I paste. Now, I'm only going to do one of each so you can see how quick and easy it is because that's what it's supposed to be. I have, as a teacher, very limited time. I want to spend that time with my students being, you know, in, in deep learning with my students, engaged in all of these wonderful activities that I want to do. I don't want to spend hours planning them or making them or finding the resources. I just want to teach it. So all I do is press next. Then I choose a template. I'm going to pick pirates because that's the theme of the term. And then again, there you go. There's my lesson. And if we have a quick preview, you can see my two options are there. There's my natural resources. There's my man-made man sources, oceans and seas. If I go to the wrong one, oh, they blow up themselves. If I go to the right one, I can do a shot across the bow. Amazing. Okay, now let's move on really, really quickly. So whilst we're on the topic of uh, uh, pirates and looking at these activities, right, I started seeing, oh, okay, so I've got some really awesome activities that I can use. Why not make a tic-tac-toe board full of nine activities that my students can choose from? They can gain points every time they finish an activity and then they can have a bonus activity at the end. So to build that, I used ChatGPT to build the activities and then the template that I had or that I used was actually from um, uh, a template I created, which you now have access to. So all you need to do is go to import a resource to the library and then all I did was my choice board template. So I thought, oh, I'm just going to bring that in. So you can see here's all the pages here. They're all linked. So everything in this tic-tac-toe board is actually linked to any of these blank pages and I just add them straight into my lesson. I'm not going to do that now because they're already in there. Um, um, so all I did was add them and then I added, put, moved the games around so that they sat under a page, whatever page it was. And now what you can see is if I click on a match -em up game, which is worth 30 points, it will take me to the instruction page. So I always have an instruction page and then the game page. Why do I have an instruction page? Well, not all of the games are self-explanatory. Equally, I have students with functional adjustment needs. So I have students who need my voice recording on there. So all I do is click the voice recording and I will read the instructions for them or I will give them extra instructions. If you are a teacher who teaches languages, it's also amazing to incorporate the language that you are teaching as well in your recording. So it's like you're there with them. So the idea of this tic-tac-toe board is, yes, I'll do the teacher direction first. So we'll do the introduction to what the water cycle is. We'll do the label, we'll watch the YouTube. We'll do an experiment. Amazing. Now go off and explore the water cycle in depth. Do it independently. Do it with a pair or do it in a small group. I don't really care. As long as you're working through it and when you've done each activity, put your hand up and I'll come and I'll look at it and we'll talk about your learning. <coughs> so really placing an emphasis on the reflection of their learning. And I love that about these tic-tac-toe boards. It's amazing. Not to mention the game card or the scorecard adds that element of competition 
um, and they really want to get to the bonus activity. And believe me, it is super fun. So a couple of the other activities that I thought would be super awesome. So let's jump to where is my favorite? Oh, the comic strip. Let's go to the comic strip. I wanted to incorporate cross-curricular activities, which included literacy. So I wanted my students to learn how to be an um, illustrator or an author. We're looking at that into it. So what did I do? Or oh, I've done a different activity to start with, but that's okay. I will come back to that one. Okay, so here we go. I thought, okay, what if I get it to write a short story and then my students need to illustrate that short story? So I asked it to write a short story on the water cycle. It gave me one, it was pretty good, but I wasn't really happy with it. So then I told it to make it for a year two student with a water droplet as the main character. Now, don't worry about the spelling mistakes that you end up with ChatGPT. It knows what you're talking about most of the time. And then all of a sudden, we were introduced to Drippy. Drippy in this version, Drip in my first original version. Um, my favorite sentence in this is that Drip had many adventures in the water cycle, but he knew he would always end up back where he started in his little stream. Already I love it. I'm already in love with it. Now, Drip comes into play in our bonus activity, and I will come back to that in a second. However, what I gave them is the choice. So on the next page, so they can either do it digitally or they can illustrate it in their science book, the story of Drip. They need to come up with their own title as well. So independently or in a pair or in a small group, they have to come up with drawings that match Drip's story. They have to come up with a title and once they're done, they put their hand up and I come in, we chat about their images, their choices, why they did that. Um, and then once I'm satisfied with what they've done, I award them the points. All they do is click the home button and they're back to the tic-tac-toe board. They can pop their little check on the comic strip and then they can come to their scorecard, write their name next to a star and add their points in a square. So that there is worth 30 points so they could add 30 points okay so that's one of the activities that we went out the other one which is my favorite because i love performing arts is act it out now i'm going to jump back up to the top so we're doing pirates and i thought how fun would it be if they had to learn how to tell the water cycle like a pirate so that's what i asked chat gpt to create for me describe the water cycle like a pirate for a year two student and boy it got cute so in my instructions, I told them to get with a partner or a small group and act out how pirates would teach each other about the water cycle so they can use the example on the next page. And that's what I used. I used the first version. But while I was sitting here, I started thinking, well, what if I turned it into a play? So I said, okay, great. Put it in the form of a play for two students. You could do four if you wanted. And there we met Jack the Sailor and Lucy the Cloud. And Lucy the Cloud teaches Jack the Sailor about the water cycle and why it's important for him as a pirate, which is arguably even cuter than the first original version, and I love it. So my students would then learn this play, act it out in front of me where they're teaching. One is Lucy, one is Jack, and they're teaching Jack about the water cycle, and they're learning about the water cycle in um in a side by side whilst they're performing their wonderful their wonderful play so then they would put their check on that and they would add points to the scorecard um the last two that i'm going to look at is art attack and my author activity so art attack was since actually let's jump to the author all i wanted was prompts so i asked it to give me uh, writing prompts. Create me five writing prompts for year two students to write a short story or narrative on the water cycle. And it gave me five. It did. And they were good, right? But I have year two and I have a lot of boys in my class and then they're not super keen on doing narratives. So let's make some of them funny. So I asked it to, yep, great, but have another crack and make them funny. So all I did was copy and paste these onto the page and then put my instructions on there. Now, the beautiful thing about Lumia was that it already had a template that I could draw on. So I pulled in a template, so it's a story map. So my students then mapped out their story and when they were ready, they put their hand up and then we discussed it. We bulked it out together. So I gave them direct feedback. They gave each other feedback, which was amazing. And then they took all of that feedback, they put it in their story map and then they put it into their short story. So really, really lovely activity there for them. Um, to do some cross-curricular activities, learning about the water cycle, but using their literacy skills in writing. 
Now, the final activity was obviously an art attack. I wanted them to do an art activity. Um, I'm just going to jump down. Here we go. I asked it to create an art activity I could have students do to create a water cycle. Now, it did do, the first one it did was a was watercolours one, which would be lovely and I'm more than happy to do that. But in a rotational activity where my students can choose what they want to do, watercolours, I think I would rather do a whole class watercolours one. For me, organisationally, I didn't want to do a watercolours one. I actually had a surplus of coloured paper and some, um, what are they called? Cotton buds or cotton balls. And so I said, okay, well, that's great, but can you do me one with coloured paper and cotton buds? And so, yeah, sure, here's another activity. So essentially I looked through it went, yeah, that's the one I want. Copied, pasted, added my instructions, and off they went. And they went and built. That was one of their activities. When they were finished their art, they put it on the drying rack, they clicked home, they showed me what they'd done, they got awarded their points. Now. I will quickly show you that I had Jack ChatGPT create a rubric. So you can see here, and I'll do this really, really quickly. Uh, where is it? Up. Oh, it's up. So I said, great, take everything that you, so this was the description it gave me at the start. I then gave it a list of the assessments that I wanted to do. Um, and I'd already created them in Lumio. So you can see here that I scrolled down right to the bottom. And I gave them, here's a fun activity. I actually had them share, justify and um, respond their ideas on what the most important phase of the water cycle is. So they have to pick a square. They have to write in their ideas of which one is the most important. And then as part of their activity, this is a small group activity, so there'll be six in this group. They have to go to one of their other friends' ideas in one of the other squares and then give it feedback using these icons. Now, they're pretty self-explanatory. If an idea that your friend has had is pretty cool and you want to build on that idea, put a builder's hat on it. If you love it, love hard it. If you don't think it'll work or you have a challenge for it, pop your lightning bolt there. If you want to explore it more, then use your magnifying glass. If you have a question about it, then pop your question mark. And if you just think it's awesome, shuckers. So, and they love it because they love giving peer feedback. Um, and that we use that as a class discussion. So it's like a reflective piece on our learning. So um, when my students add a piece of content or move an icon, their name actually gets attached to that icon. So I know who's actually given that feedback um, and then they can interact with each other. So if someone's challenging someone else's ideas, they have the right of reply, which is really awesome. And if you want to build on someone else's idea, I know which student wants to do that. So I can call on them to do that. And that leads that discussion. I then, you know, pulled some questions uh, from the quiz from ChatGPT into a review. So we play a whole, a whole class game where they put to teams and they answer 10 questions each, which is awesome. And here's my assessment. So I pulled an exit ticket, so contents page, right down to the question reflecting, and I pulled, which one did I get? This one. Explain what you've learned. So essentially, all I did was click that and it added the page. Already done. And then for convenience purposes, because I wanted to show you how you can take students' responses and um, measure them against the rubric in ChatGPT, I've popped in a sample answer for you. I've also popped in that same image. Um, if I was to turn this into an assessment, all I would do is turn this into a handout. So I would click the little magic button and turn it into a handout. And what I've actually done, and you can't see this, is I've coloured it. So for my students who need that extra scaffolding or extra support, they can use the eraser and erase the images underneath the, the um the diagram. They can also move it up and pop it on top of a label wherever it belongs. But for my students who don't need it, they're covered up with white. And then finally, I've done a, a summative assessment. So a culmination of all of those questions, I've got 12 questions in there for my students to answer that's based on the water cycle to help me understand what their, what their understanding is. So all I did in ChatGPT is I asked it to create me a rubric. So it's given me a pretty simple one, and I did ask for a simple one. But if I wanted it to elaborate on that and give me more detail, that's all I would do. I would say elaborate on this rubric and give me more detail in each section. I also asked it in this section to have a separate table for literacy outcomes. 
So what it did was it did a separate outcome for my explanation, and that's how I mark some of my literacy. So if we were focused on explanation, you can see that it's broken it down into areas that I need to mark. And again, you can change it if you want. All you need to do is give it different prompts. Um, what I did do just to test it out was I said, hey, he grade this response uh, with a previous rubric to give an overall mark and areas for improvement. And so I popped in the response. So that was the sample student response that I had in the handout. And it's given me the marks that it's done and an overall mark of satisfactory and then some responses as to where they could improve, which is fantastic. That's great. Um, so that's a really wonderful way to use ChatGPT. And I'll come back to one last one in a second. But the bonus activity. So I spoke about the bonus activity. And so what they did was they had to mark, get up to 200 points and it had something to do with our comic strip drip. Um, so what I got them to do, their bonus activity, when they got to 200, was they were able to draft up a description of drip. So using descriptive language and language features, they were to create a picture in my mind of what drip looked like to them. And then what they were able to do is go into something called Dally. Now, if you haven't tried Dally, Dally is amazing. It's a piece of AI that will create artworks based on your descriptions. Now, how wonderful is it to be able to take a student's description, have an image created based on that description, and then have them compare to what they were seeing in their head and what they were trying to describe and what's actually been generated. So then they can start reflecting on their descriptions and start thinking about, well, what do I need to change in my description? If it doesn't align, if they look completely different, what do I need to change in my description that's actually going to impact the image in the way that I want it to be visualized? So let's just surprise me for a minute. A stern looking owl dressed as a librarian, digital art. Okay, let's generate that image. So all my students would do is pop in their draft description of whatever they're doing. Um, it's great for narratives. It's great for language features. It's great for students learning how to write like an author, write the way you want people to read, write the way that you want people to visualize it in their head. And here you go, we can see a stern looking out. I mean, he's pretty cute. He doesn't look that stern. He, he looks pretty stern. But you can see that they, you know, how wonderful for students to see their written word be brought to life in digital art. So that's called Dally 2. And you can do that for free. That's awesome. There's no personal information that you need to pop in there. And that's my bonus activity for my students. So that does bring me to the end of our webinar. I, I'm pretty sure I've gone over. I do apologize um, for taking up a little bit too much time and for going too super quick, but you will get this lesson, which has the lesson links for everything. So I'm just gonna pop down to the bottom and just have a look at our resources and ideas. You can see there's the two lesson links there. So the template for the tic-tac-toe board and the lesson to, and the, the full lesson for the water cycle if you wanna use it with your classes there. Um, some other ideas, and we don't have time to go through them right now, but you can use ChatGPT for letter writing, for excursion notes, to help you give feedback or, or really, really critically think about what activities you can do to support your students based on their responses and the areas of need or the points of learning need that they need. Classroom display ideas are awesome. Um, helping you write report comments. Now, that is a big one. Go into Twitter, go into LinkedIn or even Instagram, type in ChatGPT, teacher report comments, and there are a plethora of resources that teach you the commands that you need to help you write your reports. Um, really specific, really personalized for each student. What I will tell you is not to use any personal in identifiable information. Number your students yourself, student one to 30, that is how you identify your students. Do not use their names. Do not use any information that you can identify your students in. Um, just for security and privacy purposes, I would never put any personal identifiable information into any format that is open source. Um, and then the Choose Your Own Adventure story is pretty cool. We'll come back to that one. I've also put links into Dally. So if you do want to try that 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 activity um, where you can type put in a description and it will create an image for you, and then there's lots of teachers out there that are actually creating really cool teacher resources. Um, if you follow us on Instagram, we often share them. But Andrew is um, is one I I follow quite often. He's very active in the community. Andrew Herft, um, he's done a really cool teacher's prompt guide to ChatGPT, and that sort of helps you do lots of different things 
um, here. Um, my final activity for my teachers that I would do, the final two, is I would actually get them to share, defend and um, justify some of their ideas. And I would talk about ideas that they could use ChatGTP with Lumio. So it gives others ideas on how they might use it as well. And then finally, a Q&A at the end. Now, I do really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for joining me. I do apologise if we've gone way over time and thank you for sticking with me if you have, um, if you're watching this as a recording. Um, hopefully, you've got lots out of it. Um, I've enjoyed bringing it to you. If you've got any questions, pop them in the chat. The team will answer them for you. And if not, I will be in touch. Okay, thanks so much, everyone. I really appreciate you joining me. Um, have fun. Get out there. Try and use it. Save some time um, and help you. Uh, build those lessons that you can use with your students and spend more time with your students doing all the fun things than actually sitting down and, and being knee deep in planning and resource um, creation. Have a great week and I will see you again soon. Bye. Wow. What an amazing session and the chat was just lighting up there. Um, some great ideas from Beck. I think everybody can see what an amazing tool um, chat GPT can be for, particularly for planning and to helping teachers save their precious time um, to have more time in the classroom with their students. So look, um, yeah, some questions that are coming through. We've been answering them as they have. Um, been sent to us so if there's sort of nothing further um, I think it'd be great that yeah to knowing that you get this resource so it's really fantastic I know the tic-tac-toe um, template that's completely editable so um, you can put pop your own content in there you can obviously you know use Beck's ideas and stuff like that um, I think as well I might have just had a response to on the let me just double check what we've got here um, we will send through there is actually a little bit of unknown around the um, copyright and IP given that it's AI so I, I thought that was the answer to it um, I think that Natasha is absolutely right whenever we're using artwork um, to be giving credit where credit's due uh, it's just like we would say to our students you know we would be referencing um, note as well that if you do um, you can ask chat GPTP for references and it'll give you a list of where they've got information from so if I was doing something um, perhaps in my English classes and um, I got text or somebody's argument um, that we might be looking at uh, that is something I can actually reference so you can ask chat GPT for those references as well so it's always sort of great so you know, continue to follow those same practices that we do in the classroom um, when you have got something, um, yeah, online. Um, yeah, but the, it's a very grey area and it's rapidly growing. So I'm sure we'll get answers to all of that um, in the, you know, in the coming weeks, probably, if you've seen how fast chat GPT has been growing. So look, let's just do a final check on the questions and nothing more has come through. Sending through really positive um, feedback there. We'll make sure that Beck gets that. Um, and yeah, tune into our next week's uh, session when we're hearing from Manara College. Really exciting. Um, if you haven't heard about the school, um, it's an Islamic school here in Sydney that has done on a massive tech transformation. So pretty much from zero technology to all tech, even getting rid, going paperless. Um, and they are going to share their amazing journey with us. Um, and we have a great relationship with that school, a big Microsoft school, and also a smart exemplary school. So um, lots to learn from them. And so we will catch you next week. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Natasha. Bye.